This is the story of an addictive substance, nicotine. So that's nicotine. That's what all of this is about. For decades, we got our nicotine from cigarettes. <laughs> this is about a business that sells addiction. And addiction is a spectacularly good business model. But we found that the cigarettes were killing us. What if instead we got our nicotine from vaping? If there wasn't nicotine in the vape, then there'd be no point in vaping for a smoker, right? My mother died from smoking-related lung cancer. Could vaping save the lives of Kiwis who smoke? Without a doubt, this was the number one reason I don't smoke anymore. Or is vaping just the story of smoking again? Keep inhaling. Is history repeating itself? More than 30 countries, including Australia, have banned recreational vaping. We should not allow a new generation to become addicted to nicotine. That's just nuts. One in five young New Zealanders regularly vape. Do you think that these are made to appeal to teenagers? Yes, absolutely. Our teenagers are addicted to nicotine, a substance harder to quit than heroin, and it's everywhere. There's more Shosha vape shops than KFC. What we all want to know, is vaping safe? In an unnamed building in a nondescript part of Levin sits one of New Zealand's biggest vape liquid manufacturers. This is serious. <laughs> I'm making my own vape juice to see what goes into it. Check these are tight. Yep, that's good. Nicotine is a very dangerous substance. So this is free base nicotine? Yep. So a teaspoon of this could kill you, Patty. Uh, I'm just being really careful because uh, I know that this is nicotine. <laughs> I don't want to get too close. This is a very, very addictive substance. It is, it yeah, is. Yeah, so yeah. why do we want the nicotine? Do we know? If there wasn't nicotine in the vape, then there'd be no point in vaping for a smoker, right? Yep. So that's nicotine. Look at that. It's crystal clear. Yeah, it is. That's what all of this is about. But is it safe? At the University of Auckland, Dr. Kelly Burrows wants to find out if vaping is harmful for our lungs. And I will be one of her guinea pigs as I vape for the first time. I don't want to vape. No. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we are also <laughs> going to put these breast implants on you. So we use... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> So we're going to put them up here and these help us know what the density measurements are inside your lungs. These seem quite big. You stop holding them. <laughs> How does that feel? Yeah, it feels great. Okay, just follow the breathing instructions. Breathe out and hold your breath. Please resume breathing. I've never vaped nicotine before. It's too close to the addiction that killed my mum. We're just gonna let you have a vape now. You feeling okay? I don't really wanna have a vape. I know, but in the name of science, you will. Is that working? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. I just vaped. Yeah. Yuck. We're going to get you back inside the scanner and we're going to take those same pictures again. I'm feeling nothing. Yeah? Just the taste of watermelon. Now it's back into the MRI to look at my lungs after vaping. Oh. After Dr. Burrows has analysed the data, we'll find out what the three puffs does to my lungs. The dopamine hit from nicotine is almost instant. It can make you feel more alert and less stressed but nicotine can affect the developing brain, harming the parts that control attention and learning. Some studies have found it as addictive as cocaine or heroin. The golden age of smoking saw tobacco companies making unfounded claims about cigarettes. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? 
In a nationwide survey, the brand named Most was Camel. But they knew it was a dangerous product, killing people. At its peak, about one in three New Zealanders smoked, and even today, 5,000 people are dying of smoking-related diseases every year. Is vaping the saviour, or is it just tobacco the sequel? Vaping has been around for 20 years, but it all changed in 2015 when a couple of young Silicon Valley guys built a high-tech looking vape and marketed Juul to look fun and cool. Juul targeted young people and used social media influences, as Stanford University's Dr. Robert Jackler testified in Congress. From its inception, Juul mostly advertised on social media, especially Instagram, which skews heavily towards youth. And what they did is they marketed their product using influencers. It became the viral cool thing to use amongst teens. You can't advertise vapes or sell them to anyone under 18 in New Zealand, but our vape retailers might be following Jules approach. So this is some New Zealand branding of vape yeah. products that I want you to look at. <laughs> this is stuff off of the websites you've got to be 18 to go through there but of course there's no checks or anything oh kiwi sig it's iced watermelon which is a combination of cooling as in like menthol and this is the leading type of flavor now which is a combination of a coolant and a fruit and of course it shows this splash of uh, almost like a food ad boy i'd like a bite of that there's no excuse for having a nicotine product in the kinds of flavors that appeal to young teenagers. Like this. Adult smokers are used to tobacco flavor, unsweetened tobacco flavor. So you can have a tobacco flavored e cigarette, which, by the way, kids hate. It's just taking over with teenagers. Yeah. So there should not be sweet and fruity flavors that appeal to youth in nicotine products. There just should not be. Do you think that these are made to appeal? to teenagers. Yes, absolutely. These are all things that are clearly appealing to young people. And as a public health person, the way you eventually reduce tobacco and nicotine addiction in the adult population is to protect the youth of New Zealand from getting hooked in the first place. Kids don't even understand the addiction. They don't want the addiction. They don't even want the nicotine. Are you worried about the way that our teens in every corner of the world are addicted to vaping right now? I think that decades of gradual gain in reigning in the tobacco industry and reducing nicotine addiction amongst teens have already started reversing because of the upswell of emerging nicotine delivery products. Initially, it was small startups, hundreds of little companies making vaping devices. Now it's the big boys because as the cigarettes are going down, they're looking for other ways to sustain their profitability and they're succeeding at it. Neither Philip Morris nor British American tobacco representatives would talk to us about the vaping products they manufacture. In the United States, you can make a living as a vape influencer, and while advertising vaping in New Zealand is illegal, the internet has no borders, so Kiwi kids can follow Devon on TikTok. That's a ghost. It's like a ghost that pops out and pulls back in. What else you got? Spam. Spams are really easy. Oh, yeah. You just spam a bunch of O's out. So that's a Fumi. That's a good Fumi. I enjoy vaping very much. Vaping to me was a solution to a problem that I was having, which was smoking cigarettes. Now, you're a vape influencer? So to me, it's even more than just staying away from the, you know, the icky sticks. Now it's a job for me as well. So on Instagram, we've raised up to 40,000 followers. On TikTok, we have 250,000 followers. You don't feel bad that kids might be watching it on Instagram or TikTok. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. I honestly don't think about because I, I make content for a target audience: people over 21 years of age who enjoy vaping. So now I'll show you a lasso. It's my favorite trick. 
Boom! And so that one ring wrapped around the other and created that lasso. In New Zealand, 18% of kids aged 14 and 15 are regular vapors. But before things got that out of hand in Los Angeles, they brought in tougher regulations that have seen youth vaping decline. They've included raising the age to 21 and restricting flavors. All the nicotine levels are available. You're limited though to only tobacco and menthol flavors. But it's all about the nicotine. The more that's added, the more addictive vaping becomes. They started a nicotine arms race. They did. And what they did is they transformed the market. They changed the world. I want to see what goes into vape juice. So for research purposes only, I have been making my own vape liquid at Lion Labs in Levin. Yeah. Yeah. Raspberry, blackcurrant, pineapple, strawberry, all the fruits. Tobacco flavors are probably the least popular. Yeah. If you want it to be a hot seller, you need to stick with the fruits. Yeah. 70% of the market before Well, 70% of the market's fruit. Yeah. yeah. Flavoring is key to it's vaping. Key 100%. Um, what I'm after is raspberry lamington flavored vape juice. Yeah. So just like if we went up to the main road and went to a bakery and we walked in and we grabbed one of those pink raspberry lamingtons and we got it in a little paper bag, and we went outside and we snipped it, <laughs> that's the flavor that I want. So we do a raspberry, then we can add a bit of coconut into it. We can make a blend. Make a blend, yeah. We can blend oh, we can blend. Yeah. Raspberry and coconut. Raspberry and coconut. I'll call that a lamington. These are just standard, already legal food flavorings. Whoa! Yep. That's strong. Well, that is raspberry lamington through and through. And then come the other ingredients. Vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, nicotine, obviously, and flavoring. So just four things. Just four ingredients. VG is vegetable glycerin. What, what's that? It's a common ingredient used in cakes, pharmaceutical products. It's derived from soybean oil. And there's propylene glycol, or yeah. PG. What, what does that do? Yeah, yeah. Propylene glycol is what you might use in a stage smoke machine. That's um, also what almost all nicotine and flavorings are suspended in. Manufacturers of propylene glycol and chemical safety agencies recommend that you avoid inhaling it. Yet propylene glycol makes up around half of the vape liquid. So at this point, we've got everything except nicotine. I'm just going to take this nicotine and I'm going to put it in my vape juice. This changes everything, just like that. In New Zealand, a vape liquid doesn't have to be tested before it is sold. You simply have to tell the Ministry of Health you are making or importing it in line with the regulations. Let's start the production line. All right. Boom. And here we go. PG, raspberry lamington, my own vape juice. You're going to vape that, Patty? I'm not actually going to let this go to market. And this is as far as this is going to get, actually, except for the ESR for testing, if that's OK with you guys. For sure. That's fine. Though new regulations mean I'd have to rename this to the generic berry flavour. To understand why vaping suddenly became popular, we need to understand the story of Jewel. And I tried to figure out what's different about Jewel. Why did it all of a sudden become 70% of the American market and almost 100% in kids in America. And Juul fundamentally changed the industry through its nicotine chemistry, allowed it to put much higher levels of nicotine in every puff. And I coined the term nicotine arms race because after Juul did it, what happened is the whole industry went that way. They started a nicotine arms race. They did. And what they did is they transformed the market. They changed the world. Jewel Changing the World actually started here in Christchurch. How did the Jewel vape end up getting tested here in Christchurch? The real reason is because I wanted them here. 
uh, I'm an oncologist and every day in my clinic there were people who were coming in with newly diagnosed lung cancer or dying of lung cancer and it's not a good disease to have. It's a miserable disease. 95% of lung cancer is caused by smoking. Uh, tobacco companies addict people and they keep on smoking combustible cigarettes, sucking in all the smoke with all the chemicals that that contains and lung cancer is a result of that. But it, it's better to be vaping only nicotine than smoking burnt tobacco and inhaling all of the carcinogens. I am going to replicate the Christchurch experiment that showed exactly how vaping could become the phenomena it has. This is beautiful. Why are we out here? Um, just because we don't do any smoking or vaping inside. Makes sense. What way does this go that again? Way. That way, yeah. yeah. You'll continue to inhale briefly and then you will exhale. About that way? Preferably yeah. away from yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Inhale now. Three seconds. One, two, three. Remove the device. Continue to inhale. Exhale. I can't oh, believe okay. I'm doing this. The experiment we did with you today was very similar to what we did in the dual experiment. We had you inhale in a timed fashion a vape. Keep inhaling. Smoking for me is not something I really want to be doing. My mum actually died of lung cancer. Yeah, and oh, she was she was uh, addicted to smoking. Yeah. For this scientific experiment, needs must. So yeah. Mm. Now. now, the results of that dual experiment oh. showed that as soon as you start inhaling a cigarette, the amount of nicotine in your bloodstream rises rapidly. It spikes so, and then it slowly okay. declines. Cigarette, keep inhaling and then exhale. And we took blood samples at various time points. And for the first time, we were able to show that the... <laughs> 5% dual nicotine pod created a nicotine absorption curve that was the same as a combustible cigarette. So this is a breakthrough that happened for the first time here, out on the balcony. Yep, that's right. So we were able then to say, we have a tool now that is likely to be much more effective in helping people to stop smoking. Millions of lives will be saved around the world. You were excited, really excited. Well, this is as excited as I get. <laughs> <laughs> Inhale now. One, two, three. <coughs> I tried for a big one on my last one, then it was, didn't work. That's it. But this tool to stop smoking is now being used by young kids who never smoked in the first place. Takurua was 13 when he started vaping. Last year, I used to do it in class when they leave the class. My teachers. Wow. Well, the teacher goes outside and you just vape? Yeah. So how many people that you know vape? Probably like hundreds. Hundreds? Yep. That are my age. So it's normal? Yep. How did you get into it? It was my cousin. He showed me it when I was 13. You were 13? Yep. And from then on? Then on, for three years, I've been weeping. Far out? Yeah. It's been quite a long journey with me and the vape. Schools around the country are dealing with the vaping epidemic. One out of five 14 and 15 year olds vape regularly while Māori youth are twice as likely to vape compared to non-Māori. Well, I didn't really do it in front of little kids. Yeah, but I did I did once. I just saw him watching me and I said, um, don't tell on me. And he said, can I have a try? That looks cool. Yeah, how old was that kid that saw you? He was probably seven. At Takarua's school, the principal has to do regular vape checks. Oh, yeah? Yep. So you come in here and check that nobody's been vaping? Yeah, so these are our alarms. 
You notice the effects of vaping coming off it or, or being on it in the classroom. Takuru is a, is a prime example. I confiscated his vape while we were on a school trip for a week. I saw him going through those withdrawal symptoms, you know, not wanting to speak to anyone, just not wanting to do anything really. You can tell whether they're coming off vaping because they're full of angst in the mm. classroom or whether they are vaping because they're too relaxed. Mm. Takuruo wants to quit, but he's addicted to the nicotine in his vape. And we still have no idea if it's harming kids like him. It's a giant global experiment. People volunteer to try out something new, and then in 20 years, we find out what the long-term effects were. The e-cigarette was originally created to help smokers quit by delivering them their nicotine, hopefully in a safer way. Yeah, yeah, good to see Come you. In. I could never have started on anything that tasted like a cigarette too, too close to what I was trying to quit. And I tried the menthol one. I threw it out. Yeah. I threw the whole, the pod, the everything out because they so tasted so bad. But without a doubt, this was the number one tool. This is the reason I don't smoke anymore. Sharon hasn't smoked a cigarette since May 20, 2019. How much did you used to smoke? I smoked 30 a day, every day, for 40 odd years. Wow. Yeah, I know. And you were massively addicted, I suppose. Hugely addicted. For about the first 30 years, I, I loved it and never even considered to quit. But in the last sort of few years, I, you know, I felt it was, I was getting to a stage where I wanted to quit. I tried the gum, I tried patches, I tried willpower. <laughs> that lasted about five minutes. Aside from all of the health problems that come with smoking and everything, if we're just talking about a nicotine addiction, you know, how bad is just that? They say it's in your body, but it's in your head too. It's like this little monster in your head going, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. I mean, obviously my vape still has nicotine, so clearly I'm still addicted to nicotine. You were obviously yeah. a, a really heavy smoker. Were you ever worried about your health? I was outside one night smoking and I, and I said to myself in my head, you are killing yourself, this is killing you. And I knew I would die of smoking. Smoking was more important to you than living. Yeah, than living. My mum used to smoke like you did, pack a day. Yeah. She actually died from lung cancer. I'm really sad to hear that. Yeah, well, you know, vaping wasn't around. Yeah. But when I was listening to you talk then, I, I could just see... Your mum. She died in her 50s. Way too young. Way too young. Way too young. So I'm glad you're vaping. I'm glad I'm vaping too. <laughs> Actually, I'm really proud of myself for that. Oh, you should. Because I never could have imagined going half an hour without a cigarette, let alone four years. I honestly wish my mum could have done that. Mm. Sharon and her friend Shelley were part of a program which found vaping nicotine was very useful to help quit smoking. It doesn't rule our lives anymore. Yeah. And it's but worryingly, nearly a quarter of the participants were now vaping and smoking. Dr George Lakin is an oncologist and the head of cancer research at Auckland University. Perhaps controversially, He's taking a pro-vaping stance. Having been involved in the care of so many people with cancer and the loss of life, yeah, I'd really like to see an end to smoking. There's about a quarter of people who actually think uh, that vaping's more dangerous than smoking. That's a real problem. Smoking is like the maximally hazardous uh, thing to do. And then there's like a whole sort of line of things that are successively less hazardous, like breathe fresh air, 
as a cancer doctor, I do feel strongly it's much, much better for people to get out of smoking. Vaping has got, you know, quite a lot of risk compared to breathing fresh air. Vaping has got a lot less risk compared to smoking. I don't think that's too hard to say, to be honest. There's a whole generation of Kiwi kids that are not going to smoke, but they're really, really highly likely to try vaping. I think there's some grief about it's this. Quite, uh, quite a lot of grief, isn't it? A whole generation of kids addicted to nicotine again with potential risk. The people who are vaping now, they're sort of like participating in the process whereby we find out what the long-term effects of vaping are. It's a giant global experiment. People volunteer to try out something new, and then in 20 years we find out what the long-term effects were. And what do we think they're going to be? Well, first of all, it has been going on at least since 2007. People who smoke for 16 years, you see a lot of morbidity or unwellness coming through in that time. Most likely they're not going to be that bad, you think? Life uh, is able to have surprises. But I'm just saying, for me, it, I would be surprised. I feel you are tormented by what vaping is doing. It's created this other massive problem. Yeah, well, that's perceptive, uh, Patty. But, like, what do you do? Like, at some point, you just got to, like, take that decision and say, yep, I was the person. I advocated for vaping as a way to stop smoking. I bear some of the responsibility for what's going on with young people. In the meantime, vaping has become a huge business in New Zealand. In Avondale, Auckland, Shosha is starting to fit out another store. Right. This will be... A vape store? This will be a vape store, yes. How many vapes will we have in here? Like around 1,000 different vape products. A 1,000? Yes. Vapes down there? Yes. Vapes down there? Here. Yes. Shosha started off in 2012 selling synthetic cannabis. In 2014, the government came in and they said the synthetic cannabis is psychoactive substances are all banned. We were in a shape that we don't know what products that we're gonna sell. That's when we went to US and we saw like vaping is a good market that we can step in. So you go to America and, and you see vaping. And we never look back. Boom times. Yeah, it's a boom page. Shosha is opening around 10 new stores every year. How big is the vape business for you now? So we have 119 shops as of today. Wow, 119, 120 once this is ready. Yes. There's more Shosha vape shops than KFC. I doubt that. It's uh, true. Um, okay, if it's true, yes, it is. Yeah, that okay. is true. Okay. KFC has 114 stores. Now there's a vape store in pretty much every set of shops. Little did Dr. Wynn know the Christchurch experiment would lead to this. Knowing what you know about vaping around the world now, do you have any regrets of doing the testing on the dual vape here? Well, the science was really important, and switching to vaping has the potential to save millions of lives. I, I don't regret what we did. It was a very positive thing. Now, how Juul and other vaping companies, including companies in New Zealand right now, getting into a market with an addictive drug and developing that market across all ages, mm, I, I disagree with that. We should not allow a new generation to become addicted to nicotine. That's just nuts. When you see a vape shop, what do you feel in your heart? I think that as a New Zealander, uh, we have missed the boat. I think there were opportunities to keep this better controlled. I regret that there's a new generation of people who are addicted to nicotine by using vapes, but they may have been the same people who started smoking tobacco cigarettes. Yeah. And if they're vaping rather than smoking cigarettes, I'm in favour of that. And if someone came here, anybody, and stood in front of you and said, Chris, I'm going to start vaping, what would you say to them? You're a plonker. And scientists are beginning to find out just what is in our vapes. 
it's known to be about 15,000 different flavors. They've all got different chemicals in, so no one knows what, what those flavorings are going to do to people's lungs or body. The ESR, the government's science lab, has been testing a small fraction of the vape liquids for sale in Aotearoa. They're going to test my raspberry lamington flavour. I made those. Nice. Yep, that's definitely the raspberry flavour. That's good stuff. That's good vape juice. I will soon find out. Yeah, well, yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> the ESR ran a study investigating the contents of 150 vaping products, and they came up with some dramatic results. Found products that they don't match what they say on their label. A product with six milligrams, you may have 12. So double the nicotine. We've also found products that are labelled as zero nicotine, but we've found nicotine in the product. Nevertheless. Really? Even though the label said there's no nicotine in it, people were actually taking in nicotine. That's right. Which is just so addictive. Right in here, yeah. Okay. They've also found as much as 20% ethanol, alcohol, in some vapes. And we'll put this on a spin cycle. Yeah. Scientists are still unsure of the effects of inhaling ethanol. The other thing we have found with some of the products is we've detected microorganisms in the product. That doesn't sound good. Some of the organisms we've detected are associated with saliva. These are from products that claim to be made in a, in a clean room. That's, that's disgusting. It is. In 2020, the government brought in a raft of regulations to try and clean up the industry. You know, with all of this vape testing that you've done, is it a bit of a wild west out there? I know that's not a scientific term. Certainly before the regulation, I would have said, yes, it's the Wild West. After the regulation, we, we've had, we are seeing some changes in compliance, sort of a reining in of the Wild West, but it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah, it's yeah. still pretty wild. Yeah. My test sample vape liquid, or e-liquid, is one of the few flavours in New Zealand that is actually going to be tested. So I'll know in a couple of weeks whether my PG Lamington Vape juice is safe or not, Jared? Whether it's up to standard, yeah. You've tested more vape juice probably than anyone, actually. Do you think vaping is safe? Our lungs are designed to inhale air, so anything else you're putting into your lungs could be a safety issue. That's pretty scientific, isn't it, that you should really only be putting air into your lungs? It's common <laughs> sense. <laughs> Dr Burrows and her team at the University of Auckland are leading the way by looking at the effect of vaping on the lungs. This is our vaping robot. We've got an e-cigarette here. That's a vaping that's device. A vape. So that's someone sucking it in. So a standard puff, which is three seconds. And then in this little bottle here, we can collect the aerosol and we can look at what chemicals are in there. It has been busily vaping to find the kind of chemicals in e-liquids. And in that, you've found all sorts of chemicals. Yeah. We found heavy metals. We found really it correlates with what the coil is made out of. So things like manganese, copper, chromium. Some of those metals were found at levels higher than allowed in our drinking water. You looked at 20 e liquids. Yes. What was in them? So the main ingredients are this propylene glycol, vegetable glycerol, and then nicotine, but we found each different e-liquid had about 40 different flavouring chemicals in there. So I think that's one of the tricky things in understanding the health effects is that all of these e-liquids, I mean, there's known to be about 15,000 different flavours, I think, at one count. They've all got different chemicals in, they've all got different flavours, and no one knows what, what those flavourings are going to do to people's lungs or body. One flavour of vape juice has about 40 different chemicals in it, just for the flavour? Yes. So these flavourings are used in food already, so they're generally thought to be safe, but that's for eating them. No one's tested what they do when you inhale them. New Zealand smoking rates have been decreasing, while vaping has been increasing. And in 2022, for the first time, there are more vapors than smokers. 340,000 Kiwis are vaping daily. How long have you been vaping for? Five years. 
I dated someone when I was 16 and he had a vape and I was like, what is this thing? And I tried it and instantly I was like, and then obviously everyone at school started doing it, just in class up the sleeve, like. And did you even smoke a cigarette? I actually tried to start smoking to stop vaping. Oh my God, <laughs> really? Yeah. Couldn't afford it though. <laughs> didn't work because it was too no, expensive. It didn't work. <laughs> no, because I thought having like the routine of going outside for a cigarette would be better than sitting inside constantly just inhaling the nicotine, but I ended up just doing both. Having a quick I mean, vape? Well, yeah. Yeah. It used to be a cigarette, but now it's electric. Yeah, you used to be a smoker. Oh yeah, big time, big time. So I don't do the tobacco anymore, but these things you can smoke them in the office sorry boss <laughs> i vape in the car i vape in bed i get up in the morning i'm vaping so you can vape in the office and get away with it well yeah there's there's no smell no one can tell i'm doing it so i'm going to do it more it's a habit it's a dreadful habit i just can't stop now well it's better than smoking no. it's better than tobacco yeah at yeah. the moment. Well, until we find out, we get popcorn lungs from it, you know? Popcorn lung is a disease that people at popcorn factories can get when diacetyl, the butter flavour in popcorn, turns into an aerosol. Diacetyl has now been banned from vape liquids around the world. And while not illegal in New Zealand, no one seems to use it. But when vitamin E was added to vapes in the United States, the results were lethal. So I kind of told her half naggingly, I guess, um, I hope you don't have that vaping disease. And two days later, she died. In 2019, in the United States, vitamin E was added to some cannabis vapes, resulting in 68 deaths. Maggie's mother was a heavy vapor. Oh man, she was just the kind of person she would like scream, sing Macy Gray or um, Dancing Queen, you know, all that type of thing. She just, I think, was a kid at heart naturally and just just a, a guiding presence in my life, I guess. What are your memories like of being around her? I mean, throughout my whole childhood, she was a smoker. She was uh, a pretty heavy, just traditional smoker. And how old were you when she was smoking and, and giving up and going on to the vape? I was probably in my early teens, like 12, 13, when she started um, using the pen. And I know my dad looked down on it. I mean, as a doctor, he was against smoking in any form. So when did you realize that things started going wrong with your mom's health? Uh, it was summer. 2019, um, which is the year that she died, she came out to visit me and had this just awful persistent cough. She told me that she had been feeling a little under the weather for a couple months then. At that point, I had kind of gotten used to my dad nagging her about vaping. So I told her, you know, it's probably because you vape so much. It was not long after that when she told me she was hospitalized. She said it, she had just had pneumonia. At that point, the vaping disease had just begun to hit the news. Researchers are working hard to determine the cause of more than 500 cases of lung illness affecting e-cigarette users. Eight of those people have died. The American Centers for Disease Control suggests people avoid using e-cigarettes. Stop vaping now. It happened that quickly. It did. I, even the... You know, when we were trying to get her case investigated, um, people seemed very skeptical that vaping could kill somebody that quickly. Uh, I think since then, there's been 60 or 70 confirmed deaths from that outbreak. What we didn't know at the time was the vitamin E acetate that she had been inhaling. Yeah, because it is something that is safe to put in food, for instance, right. vitamin E. Just from the, what I know from my conversations with doctors and with my dad as well, it's just inhaling it is just a completely different game. And it shows that just one ingredient can take a vape from being safe to being deadly. Yeah.
The ESR testing of my Lamington flavoured vape liquid found no saliva and the nicotine levels match the label. And Dr. Kelly Burrows had my results from vaping in the MRI. Would they show vaping is dangerous? Can get a measurement of what your blood flow is in your lungs. And this top one is before you vape and the bottom one is after. And basically your blood flow went up about 14% in your lungs. Three puffs of a vape was enough to make a really tangible difference to my blood flow. Yeah. Dr. Burrows has been running the same experiment on 20 people who are regular vapors. What we found was that blood flow mostly went up in these participants. So that is thought to be because of the nicotine. And what we found was that the people using higher concentrations of nicotine had more increase in blood flow. If you vape, there's more blood flow into your lungs than, than normally just Before. breathing air. Yeah, so other studies have been looking at similar things. They find that your blood pressure goes up in different parts of your body. Your heart rate increases and your blood flow goes up. So this is probably OK if it happens every now and then. I mean, it does normally. But if you're doing it 20 times a day, your blood vessels will start to remodel. They potentially get stiffer. And that can then lead to increased risk of uh, heart disease and stroke. Holy shit. That's not great. No. While the research is just beginning, we can't say vaping is definitely safer than smoking. For now, all we know is that it's differently harmful, but most likely safer. For Sharon, who reminded me so much of my mum, the risk is worth it. So you literally sucked on a vape yep. and never smoked again after 30 years of a pack a day smoking. 40, actually. Oh, 40, 40. years. No, not that we count. Yeah, 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 no, no, after 40 years of pack a day yeah. smoking. Well, it wasn't over easily, but from that date, never touched another cigarette. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I honestly wish my mum could have done that. I wish your mum could have done that too. Mm. I would get any smoker to vape but any non-smoker who starts vaping is a plonker. Vaping expert Dr. Jackler and I had something in common. We both lost our mums to cigarettes. So I was the kind of teenager who stole my mother's cigarettes not to use them, but because I loved her and I cared for her. I've always wanted to know what my mother's addiction was like. Why was she so addicted and whose fault was that? What happens is you get hooked on nicotine. And nicotine is a very sticky addiction. And once you've become addicted, you're often a lifetime addict because it is so difficult to quit. It takes a great deal of effort to quit and to stay off nicotine. It is a chemical that just grabs your brain, especially the teenage brain that's developing. It has a way of getting its hooks in there. And of course, this is about a business that sells addiction. And addiction is a spectacularly good business model. Wow. That was actually frightening the way you describe that. The vaping experiment truly scares me. In many countries, the rate of combustible cigarettes use is going down. That's true in New Zealand, it's true in America. But the rate of nicotine addiction is not necessarily going down. So you might say, well, you know, maybe vaping's not so bad. When you start smoking as a teenager, it's 30 or 40 years before you get lung cancer and emphysema of daily smoking. On the other hand, with vaping, we don't know. It is all about profit. It is an industry that does not care one bit about the implications of health for its consumer base. It is simply exploitative capitalism. And I'm a capitalist, but you know, there are times that industries are just evil. And the tobacco industry is evil and it needs to be reined in. They have done it again, just like they grabbed your mum, just like they grabbed my mum. They're using vaping to grab our teenagers. That's right. 